We'll go with this one. Good morning. It is good to see each one of you here today. We're glad you're able to come and be with us this morning. Uh, certainly excited. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, we especially want you to feel right at home and welcome. We're certainly glad that you've taken time out of your day to come and be with us. A few announcements that I do want to make you aware of. Uh, you'll see in your, uh, in your bulletin that uh, on Wednesday evening, we're going to go out and do uh, gospel to every home again this week. Uh, our youth came down and helped us last week. Uh, they're, they're going, youth will have regular Wednesday night services uh, this week, but our, our adults are going to go out again. Uh, tremendous, tremendous time uh, going out and being able to, to share the gospel. Lots of good reports uh, from that, and so we certainly appreciate everyone that was able to do that. And we're, Again, we'll hit it again this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, and then moving uh, on to a little further down the calendar, September 1st, we'll get back to our Wednesday evening uh, children's Bible study. Uh, and so a first official night will be September 1st, uh, and the next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock, we will have a, a meeting uh, in the Family Life Center to, to go over some of those things. Uh, so if you're willing to help out or have signed up to help out, uh, be a teacher, uh, next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock here, we'll have a, a brief meeting to be able to discuss some of those things and, uh, and help us plan and prepare for that. Again, we are certainly glad that you're here this morning, and uh, as soon as I, I, I pray and open us up in a word of prayer, we've got some folks that we want to recognize this morning. So let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful, uh, Lord, for all that you do for us, and Lord, just for being so good and so gracious. And God, again, we are, uh, Lord, just uh, thankful for the opportunity to be able to come together and, and to worship you. And Lord, we pray, uh, as we always pray, God, that we would worship you as you truly deserve to be worshiped. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Um, so we haven't had a chance, even though we've announced it, we haven't had a chance to present our Bible drill winners, our state Bible drill winners, with their um, awards. So I would like everybody that um, went to state and um, won an award to come forward this morning when I call your name. And we're going to start out with our children's winners. So our children learned 25 Bible verses and 10 key passages, the location of where they were at, and they were able to find those within 10 seconds. So our step winners this year were Lydia Red, Megan Wadlington, and Caleb Wadlington. And this was Caleb's third year um, for being a state winner, so he got the three-year state winner award when we went to state. Now we're going to move on to youth. Um, so our youth, they learned about 30 verses and short passages, and they had to memorize everything that they learned and find it in the Bible within eight seconds. So um, I would like to um, recognize Miss Ellie Red. And this says that she is being awarded for and demonstrating her knowledge and usage of the Bible. So there are two certificates there and a medal. And the same for Mr. Walker Wadlington. Now, both of them um, were state winners. However, the highest score in the state does get um, to go on to the national drill. And Walker Wadlington was our Kentucky state winner this year. Now, finally, we have our speaker from this year. And in speaker's tournament, the students write a speech that is four to six minutes. And you all had the privilege of seeing McKenna perform her speech before she got to go to nationals. So McKenna Finley was our Kentucky winner <laughs> in speaker's tournament this year. So I want to tell you all that next Sunday night, right after our um, meeting for Wednesday nights at 5, at 6 o'clock, we are going to have the high school Bible drills start. Now, this year we didn't have any high schoolers, but hopefully 
uh, we will have several this year. And I'm eyeballing a few of our youth, okay? Um, because anybody in grades 10 or 11 in, or 12 can participate in high school Bible drills. And you will memorize over 60 verses, and you will be able to find those verses within eight seconds. Now, that may seem like a lot to you. However, it, you're going to have only two verses per week. It's going to take you only about five minutes per day. And I know that you spend at least five minutes every single day on either Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. So you can spend five minutes learning God's Word every day, and I want to challenge you to do it. If you're an adult and you've always wanted to memorize Scripture, I want to challenge you to come and join us. I'm not going to make you find it in eight seconds, but I'm challenging myself to memorize these verses with these kids this year. So next Sunday night at 6 o'clock in the Family Life Center, our high schoolers will start. Thank you all. Good morning. Let's all stand, please, as we get ready to sing There's Power in the Blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. You may be seated. Revival, biblically, is not lost people getting saved. It's saved people getting right. If I could say it in Tennessee terms, if you've not been vibed, you don't need to be revived. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just going to make a general statement. COVID, like it or not, has done a number, not just on our nation, but on the world. They're saying that somewhere between 32 and 50% of the people who went to church before COVID will not be coming back. I hope they're wrong. And I believe that today, we're seeing what happens when there's a drought of the voice of God. When there's a drought of the voice of God, cities end up looking like the city of Chicago. When there's a drought of the voice of God, nations end up looking like America. There's anger and there's division. There's a, a, the absence of love and there's so little progress and there's chaos and there's looting and there's breaking of windows and setting cars on fire. Why? It's because there's a drought of the Word of God. People go crazy when there's a drought. You know that, right? Somebody said, oh, we need Jesus in the Capitol. We need Jesus in our government. We need Jesus in our schools. We need Jesus in our universities. Get real, we need Jesus in our churches. And there are two voices. There's a deceptive voice, 
and there's a voice of life and truth. John 10, 10 says the thief, this is the plan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his plan. See, as Baptists, we, we, we were not a people necessarily known for our convention. There was a time we weren't known for our buildings and our budgets. There was a time we were known for our brush arbors. And when a Baptist rolled into town, bless the lamb, I'm telling you, bars shut down because new wine started flowing. Brothels shut down because men got saved and harlots got right and redeemed. I'm telling you, used to be Baptists were not known for their literature out of Nashville. They were known for the Lord that moved through the community. And we were some hallelujah people. We're birthed out of revival. And now, now we become so, so convinced minded we're the biggest Protestant denomination in the world there there are 47,000 Southern Baptist churches of which 21,000 didn't baptize a single soul last year purpose of his gracious call in my life to salvation the reason he allowed me in through the suffering death of his own son and the power of the resurrection now lives to transform who I am how I live and how I think is so that every other person on the other side of that relational role sees Jesus in me. If the only voice in your life is your voice, you will miss the call of God. Come on, somebody say amen to that. We need his voice. But 82% who don't go said these words. If a friend or a relative would invite me to church, I'd go. This is the sad part of my story. There were churches all around us, but nobody was knocking on our door. Nobody was inviting us to church. You know why some of our lives go sideways? Because we no longer want in our walk with God what we wanted when we got started. How about you? Did you love him more back then than you do now? Was there a time that you were, quote, on fire, zealous in your faith with God? your commitment to Jesus Christ, the one who has secured your eternity for you? If not, today would be a great day to come home. Father, in the name of Jesus. Well, good morning again, church. So the most important statement in that video, in my opinion, was the opening statement, which said that the revival is the people of God getting right with him. And so that is my prayer this week. The great comeback revival is going on at the Eddyville Mall every night, starting tonight at 7 p.m. And a lot of those, or all of those speakers are going to be there. Um, and so my prayer is that things don't go as planned because God shows up. Because that's what revival is. It's not just a, a list of fancy speakers. It's God actually showing up and people's lives getting changed. My prayer is that the people of God will want him more than the comfort of their air conditioning. Or more than getting to bed on time. And my prayer is that I will see each of you there. And that you'll bring somebody with you because we want to share those gospel seeds. And we want to not only be right with him ourselves and have that power of him in our lives, but we want to see other people changed for eternity by coming to know him. So if you uh, don't drive after dark, you don't have an excuse. They're having revival meetings every, uh, well, not every day, but Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 10 a.m. at the same giant white tent right outside the Eddyville Mall. So if you work second shift, you can come to those. If you don't drive after dark, you can come to those. And I pray that this revival is a precursor for our own revival here at Liberty Point, which is coming up in September. And I pray that the Spirit of God would be so heavy upon Western Kentucky that we can't even start school come August 11th that, uh, because everybody's going to the revival to experience God. So... I hope that you will pray that with me. Paxton. Father, we are so, uh, so thankful, Lord, uh, for the way that we have seen you move uh, in, the, in times past, the way that we have experienced you move even in our own lives. Uh, but, Father, this morning we come to you, Lord, asking you to move uh, once more. God, uh, the way that we've seen you do it in the past, Lord, we pray that you would do it again. 
Uh, and God, we pray that you would move through these, uh, these revival meetings. Uh, God, that it wouldn't just be uh, a revival where we get together and, and have a series of meetings, but God, that true, true revival would take place. God, that your people uh, would, would come to life uh, once more. God, again, we thank you for all that you do for us and pray now that you would continue to move in our, in our hearts today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand once again, please. There's, there is a fountain. They 
say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there
water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome and This morning we continue in the book of James. We have worked our way through several verses and we're going to continue working verse by verse through the book of James. And uh, this morning I just want to kind of give you a, a quick reminder of who James is because it will certainly be important uh, for our passage this morning. Uh, but, but James, uh, the, the, the one who wrote this book, is the half-brother of Jesus. We know a few things about James. If you remember, uh, we said as, as the half-brother of Jesus, he also doubted uh, that Jesus was who he said he was, uh, that, that James was, was not a believer until after the resurrection. Uh, the resurrection changed absolutely everything for James. Uh, he, had, he had heard Jesus' teachings, he had seen Jesus in person, but yet he was not a believer until the resurrection. The resurrection changed the course uh, of history, but it changed the course of James's life as well. And James became this, uh, this passionate believer uh, after the resurrection and, and went on to lead the church in Jerusalem. Now, now all of that will be really important for us uh, here in just a moment uh, as we get into the word this morning. Uh, this morning we're going to be in verses 20 through, uh, 22 through 25 of James chapter 1. So once you find your place in James chapter 1 beginning in verse 22, I'll invite you to stand with me if you're able as we honor the reading of God's word. James chapter 1 beginning in verse 22. The scripture says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away 
and at once forgets what he is like, what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Let's pray together. God, we are so thankful for this time, Lord, to be able to come together and to worship you, Lord, as we've had the opportunity here today. But God, now to be able to come together to hear directly from you. God, we believe with everything that we are, God, that this is your word. And God, that it's authoritative for our lives. So God, we pray this morning that you would use your word to reveal who we are. God, that we would see ourselves this morning clearly, more clearly than ever. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, this, this morning, if I had to give a, a title to the message, it would be, it would be Are You Listening? Now, I, I don't know if any of you all are, are like me, but have you ever been asked that question, Are You Listening? And that makes you really nervous if you weren't. <laughs> uh, right? When you have somebody that's talking to you and they go, Are you listening to me? That makes you have to, to quickly replay everything that they've just said in your mind. Like, okay, I, I think I heard them say this, and I, I heard them say this. But if you weren't listening, when they say, are you listening? You go, oh, what did they say? It had to be important or they wouldn't have asked, right? It, 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 it's it, it's got to be something that, that I was supposed to be listening to, and now, now I'm in a pickle. Uh, and, and so the, the, the question, are you listening, is one that, that as long as you're paying attention, as long as you're actually listening, uh, is one thing. Uh, but, but if you're not, it can be a question that can bring in all sorts of, of, uh, all sorts of emotions. And James has, we're just a little bit into his letter here, right? Only 22 verses in at the start of these. Uh, he's got a, a few more chapters left, left for us here. But, but James comes to a place here early in his letter where he's basically going to ask this question, are you listening uh, because there's a difference between uh, listening and, and just hearing, right? It, you, you can hear lots of noise going on, lot, lots of things happening, but it, when you listen, that means you, you can kind of tune everything else out and, and really focus on what someone is saying. Not only can you, can you hear them, but that means you, you're actually processing it, and, and I'm going to do something with what you've just told me, right? And so that's the question that James basically begins with in verse 22. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. James says that not only do you have to hear the word, but you have to actually process it, right? You've got to be listening to the point where I can pay attention, I can catch what's going on, and now I'm going to put that into action. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. And he says deceiving yourselves. Then he goes into verse 23. He says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he's like. He says, I want you to be doers of the word and not just hearers. And in verse 23, that verse, he says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. I, I, I've done some study in this past uh, couple weeks, and, and that, that phrase, not a doer, is actually just one word uh, in, in the original language. It, it's, it's literally a not doer. And, and the more I looked at that, the more I thought, man, you know, there is a difference between someone who uh, is, is not a doer and someone who's not a doer, right? Uh, if, if somebody tells me, hey, I need you to do this, and, and, and I forget about it, you, you might say, oh, well, Paxton forgot. Uh, he, he didn't do it, so uh, he obviously heard me, but he didn't do it. Now, if that becomes a, a habit, you, you eventually look at me and you go, Paxton's a not-doer. <laughs> Everything that I say, he, he hears it, but he definitely doesn't do it. And that's what James says here, right? For the one who is a hearer of the word and a not doer, uh, not a doer, uh, he, he says it, it becomes a habit in, in many of us and we become a not doer. Church, I, I don't know about you, but man, the last thing I want to be in God's eyes is a not doer. I, I, I don't want God to look down on Paxton Red and go, man, that guy hears, but he doesn't do nothing, <laughs> And he's a not-doer if there ever was one. Uh, that's, a, that's a terrible description. But James says if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, 
He's like a man who looks at a mirror and then goes away and forgets what he looks like. Uh, let's just pause here just for a, a second to, to remind ourselves of what the purpose of a mirror is. Right? I, I think we all know uh, that, that the only reason you look in a mirror is to see what you look like, right? I, I've never been and looked in a mirror to see what someone else looked like. I, I've never gone and looked in a mirror to, uh, to, to check on the weather, right? The only reason you look at a mirror is to see what you look like, you, to, to, to make sure uh, may, maybe you got uh, something on the side of your face after, after a, a big milkshake. Whew. Still feeling that big milkshake. Uh, but may, maybe you go, man, I, I got, got whipped cream all over me. I don't know how I got it in my ears. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, you, you go to a mirror to see what you look like. That's the only purpose of a mirror. You want to see yourself. And so James says that the word of God can be a mirror for us. Uh, last week, he said that the word of God was like seed that was planted into us. And this week, we see that not only is the word of God like seed, but the word of God can be a mirror. Uh, Warren Wiersbe says that, that people make a lot of mistakes when they look in a mirror, that, that uh, they do several things wrong when they look into a mirror. And I think, I think his words are true. And so I, I want to point out just three quick mistakes we make when we look in the mirror based on what James has to say here. Three, three quick mistakes that, that we make when we look into the mirror, and James is going to point these things out. The, the first thing that we make a mistake is when we only glance in the mirror. When you only glance in the mirror. It says for uh, verse 24, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he's like. Uh, the, the only way that, that you can forget something you see in the mirror is if you just glance, right? If I go to the mirror and I just glance, I go, I, I think I look okay. Sorry, I just glanced this morning. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was all right, but obviously it wasn't. Uh, when we only glance, we, we don't really take in everything that we're seeing. It's the difference in somebody who says, uh, hey, I, I, I've got some, got some health issues. I need to go to the doctor. Now imagine you go to the doctor. And, and while you're there, uh, the doctor says, oh, we're, we're going to need to take some pictures uh, to be able to, to check you out. And you go, OK, I definitely understand. I, I want to get to the bottom of these health concerns. And imagine the doctor reaches down out of his bag and pulls out a Polaroid camera and <laughs> snaps a picture and goes, we'll wait for these and we'll, we'll see, see what's going on. You're like, Doc, uh, that's a Polaroid. And he goes, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to be able to tell a lot from, <laughs> from this picture. Uh, you said, wouldn't you want to look at, at something that, that looks a little deeper? Like, say, for example, a, an MRI, right? A, instead of a Polaroid, but let, let's get an MRI so that we can actually see some detail and see what's going on on the inside, right? Let's, let's look at some, so, some, some tissue and some bone. That, I want to be able to see everything if, if we're going to try to examine this thing, right? A, a Polaroid is drastically different from an MRI, and, and, and James would tell us the same thing, that, that when we just glance in the mirror, it's just exactly like looking at a Polaroid versus looking at an MRI. Well, what are, you, what are you talking about, Paxton? I told you that the Word of God is like a mirror, right? So if, if in our daily lives, if we're just glancing at it, it's like taking a Polaroid. Well, let's be honest. Some of, some of us aren't even glancing. Let's just be honest. Let's be real this morning. We're, we're not even glancing in the mirror not even glancing at the word. But, but when we take time to actually get into the word of God, we can see ourselves far more clearly. If we just glance at it, and we're just taking a look at it from time to time, but if we dig into the word, it begins to show us far more detail. You see, the first mistake that, that we make when we are looking in the mirror is that we just glance at it. And that's the difference between a Polaroid and an MRI. Church, we've got to dig into the Word. Not just on Sunday mornings, not just when someone is preaching, but we've got to spend our time with God in His Word. Maybe for you, that means you, you need to set some limits on other things in your life. Maybe you say, you know, after a certain time in the day, I'm not, I'm not going to look at my phone anymore, and every time I want to look at my phone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the Bible instead. Or, or maybe you say, I'm going to set apart this amount of time to be able to actually get into God's word. But if you don't do it, all you're doing is glancing in the mirror. And church, we can't just glance. We've got to 
dig into it. The, the second mistake that James says that, that we see uh, about people who, who look into the mirror is the second mistake is they forget what they see. Not only do they just glance at it, but they forget what he sees. Verse 24, once more. It says, for he looks at himself and goes away and it, at once forgets what he was like. Now, obviously, James is using this as, as an example uh, to be able to help us to see ourselves in this. No, no one would think rightfully so that, that anyone would walk in and look at a mirror and walk away and forget who he was, right? No, that, that seems so crazy to think that well, we, we, would, we would see ourselves in a mirror and then turn away and go, who's that guy in that mirror? You know, I mean, James is using an exaggeration here to help us see how serious this is, though. Because when we look into the Word of God and see ourselves, if we're not careful, we can quickly forget what we look like. What do you mean? Well, if the Word of God is a mirror once more, and I'm digging into it, and I'm, I'm getting a clear picture of who I am, right? Not just the Polaroid, but the MRI. I'm seeing my heart. I'm, I'm seeing my struggles. I'm seeing all the problems that I have going on. It's exactly what takes place in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated high upon his throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him were angels, each with six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they called out to one another, and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and the whole earth is full of his glory. And Isaiah says this, Isaiah, the first thing that Isaiah says, after he's seen the Lord on this throne and seen him high and lifted up and seen his majesty, the first thing out of Isaiah's mouth is, woe is me. For I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. You see, when Isaiah got a very clear picture of what he looked like in the mirror, he didn't forget it. He didn't walk away and go, you know what, that guy doesn't look half bad after all. <laughs> he, he didn't look at the mirror with mud on his face and walk away and act like there was nothing there. When Isaiah looked into the mirror of the word of God, when he looked upon how great God is and how wonderful and, 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 and mighty and glorious he was, he didn't walk away going, I think I'm in pretty good shape. Instead, Isaiah said, woe is me for I am undone. I'm broken, and I'm a man of unclean lips. I, I, Isaiah looked into the mirror, and he didn't forget what he looked like. Church, if we just simply glance at God's word, and we don't actually allow it to, to dig deep into our hearts, if, if we don't allow God's word to begin to change who we are on the inside, we'll do just like the guy in the, in the book of James, that we look at ourselves, we glance at it, and then we walk away and think everything's fine. Maybe, maybe you've played this game long enough that, that you even do it at church, right? We, we come to church and we hear a message and we go, man, God really spoke to me today. And we walk out the door and go, whew, I'm glad I got out from under that one. Glad, thing that, glad that's over so I don't have to deal with that anymore until next week. Some of you guys are just glutton for punishment, right? Uh, instead of fixing the problem, let's just get punished every week because God's going to speak to me and I know I need to make changes. God's going to speak to me and I know I need to do this. But instead, I'll just keep being punished every week and go, okay, I'll, I'll walk out of here and deal with it again next week. No, J James said how foolish it sounds, how crazy it sounds to think that someone can look in a mirror and then forget what they look like. He says it, it, it doesn't make sense, but that's one of the mistakes that we make when we look in a mirror. Again, let me remind you that we make the mistake when we only glance in the mirror. And the second mistake is when we forget what we see. And the third mistake that I want us to, to pay attention to this morning is when we don't do anything about what we see. When we don't do anything about what we see. So imagine going to a, to a mirror and seeing something on your face that, that obviously should not be there and going, well, I, I don't guess there's anything I can do about that one. No, obviously, when you see something wrong, you, you want to you want to move remove it. I, I, I remember going on a whitewater rafting trip with our youth group. We had gone to to summer camp uh, one summer, and, and, and on our free afternoon, 
the church went, went whitewater rafting uh, for the youth, uh, for youth camp. And I, I remember, man, we, we were doing all kinds of, of amazing stuff. We were, we were whitewater rafting on the Okoe River. And, and uh, for those who remember the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, that's, that's where they had the, the Olympic uh, kayaking, the Okoe River. Uh, and, and so it was, it was a really, really serious rapids. And like they had really built this up. And I was in the front. And, uh, and the guy done, done some amazing things, and somehow he was able to turn this raft around and run it up under uh, a, a rapid. And so I'm in the front of this, this, this raft, and as the water's coming over, I, I, I literally get underneath this, this rapid, and uh, I'm, I'm panicking. I'm like, how do, how do I get out of here? And the next thing I know, the guy backs us out, and he's laughing. He's having a big time. You know, he thought it was real funny. But I turned around and looked at him. He goes, hey, man. Do what? And he goes, what, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, you got something hanging out your nose. <laughs> so I, I, I got cleaned up. The worst thing I could have done, right, if somebody says, hey, hey you might want to check on that. The, the worst thing I could do is go, yeah, did that on purpose. <laughs> it's there, it's there to, to bring out the color of my eyes. <laughs> right? No, when you've got something on your face, you deal with it. Right? You do something about it. And so the worst mistake that we can make is when we see ourselves in the mirror, but we don't do anything about it. And that's what hearing and not doing is exactly. Again, let me just remind you, verse 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. James says that, We can make all kinds of mistakes when we look in the mirror. When we look into the word of God and see ourselves, if we only glance, church, we don't get the full effect. If we only uh, take take a moment uh, uh, out of our day to look into it instead of digging into it, we're, we're making a mistake. If we forget what we look like when we dig into the word and have God convict us, if we forget what we look like, church, we're making a mistake. And then finally, if we don't do anything about what we see, We're making a mistake. And that's what James says, that we've got to be not only hearers, but doers. When we see ourselves in the word of God, we've got to allow it to begin to transform us and to change us into the people that he wants us to be. When we see ourselves clearly in God's word, we've got to then allow God to begin to work on us. But we also have to respond by doing what he's called us to do. This is not just absorb some knowledge and be better for it. This is be obedient, be faithful, do what I've called you to do, act on the things that I've placed in front of you. Do these things and you will be blessed, he says. Verse 25 again, and when it says that the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, I I think a lot of times we hear that word liberty and uh, we might even think about our church, right? I go to Liberty Point uh, or or, or we we, we hear liberty and justice for all. I think we have forgotten what liberty really means, right? Liberty at, at the heart of it, when, when you boil it down, what does liberty mean? It's freedom. And so the one who, who looks into the law of freedom, the one who is obedient with the law of freedom. So in, in other words, when we obey God, when we obey his word, he sets us free. You, you want to know what freedom is? Be obedient to the Lord. Do what his word says. If we want to experience freedom, James says the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, we actually hear it and we do it. It says he'll be blessed in his doing. We get set free, church. We get freedom. And not only that, but it says that you're blessed in the doing. So church, let me ask you, are you listening this morning? See, James had heard Jesus talk. James had heard Jesus teach. He had heard all the things that Jesus had to say his entire life. He grew up in it. He grew up in the house with him. James had heard Jesus, but it wasn't about the hearing. It was something else, right? There was more to the story. 
It wasn't until after the resurrection that James actually listened and realized that there's something that I've got to do with this as well. The resurrection changed everything for the world, but it changed everything for James. So this morning, if God has been speaking to you, I pray that you don't just hear him. I pray that you don't just hear his word this morning, but I pray you do something with it. I I pray that we actually begin to act on what he has to say to us this morning. In just a moment, we're going to have a time of invitation, and it's it's not my invitation. It's really a time of response. Maybe this morning God has been speaking to you. Maybe this morning during this message, you, you, you know without a doubt that God has laid some things on your heart. And this morning, now you have an opportunity to actually listen and respond, right? No, don't just hear it, but respond to what God has said to you. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you so much for your word and for, Father, how we can look into your word and see ourselves so, so clearly. God, the more time we spend in your word, Lord, the more we know about ourselves. So, God, I pray this morning that we wouldn't make the same mistakes that others make. God, that we'd just glance at your word. God, to take something off a to-do list or a checklist to make us feel better. But that, God, we would see the difference in a Polaroid and an MRI, Lord, as we look into your word. God, this morning, I pray that we wouldn't forget what we see. God, that we would recognize that we've got problems. God, that, that we wouldn't just look into your word and go, okay, everything's fine. But that, God, we would see ourselves for who we truly are. Lord, people in desperate need of a Savior. God, completely trusting in you is our only hope. And God, finally, that we wouldn't just see ourselves and do nothing about it. But God, that when we look into your word and and see what it has to say to us, that God, we would be people of action. God, that we would take uh, the opportunity, Lord, to, to do something about what we see. So God, this morning, we know that we have seen ourselves in your word. God, this morning, I pray now that we would do something about what we've seen. God, that we would respond in whatever way you lay upon our hearts. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us? Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you so much for being here this morning. If you weren't able to come and be with us last Sunday evening, we had a, a frantic uh, but, but a wonderful night being able to go down to the, to the beach for a baptism. Uh, and so this morning, I, Grayson, you come up, buddy, just for a second. I got something for you here. Uh, Mr. Grayson Butts was one that, that we were able to, to see baptized and follow the Lord in obedience. Proud of you, man. I just want to give you that certificate of baptism there. You can, uh, you can hold on to that. You can frame it. It'll be worth something. It's got my signature on it. So, no, I'm kidding. Appreciate you. Y'all give Grayson a hand. We're certainly proud of him and his obedience. 
Absolutely. And uh, Jim Tribble was the other one. Uh, Jim's not here. He's, he's out of town this morning. But uh, uh, Jim was the other one that we were able to, to, to celebrate with as he was uh, obedient and followed the Lord in baptism. So uh, wonderful time uh, last Sunday evening. And I certainly uh, appreciate all those who came out and made that possible. Anyone else have anything on your heart before we dismiss this morning? All right. Well, again, it's so good, so good to see each one of you here this morning. I'm going to ask Riley, if you wouldn't care, would you dismiss us this morning?